this trial chamber is sitting today to deliver, to deliver its judgment in the case of the prosecutor versus Martin, Milan Martich. First of all, the trial chamber wishes to thank the parties, the registry staff, and all others who have assisted in the smooth and efficient running of this trial. The, the trial chamber emphasizes that this is but a summary of its findings and that the only authoritative account is the written judgment which will be made available after this hearing. This trial started on the 13th of December 2005 and concluded on the 12th of January 2007. During the trial, which encompassed some 11,000 transcript pages, the chamber heard the evidence of 67 live witnesses and admitted written evidence of 33 witnesses. The trial chamber admitted just over 1,000 exhibits. The indictment in this case charges Milan Martic with individual criminal responsibility in 19 counts which set out nine counts of violations of the laws or customs of war under Article 3 of the statute, including murder, attacks on civilians, torture, cruel treatment, destruction of villages and institutions dedicated to religion and education, and plunder of public or private property, and 10 counts of crimes against humanity under Article 5 of the statute, including persecution, extermination, murder, torture, inhumane acts, and deportation. The prosecution has alleged that Serb forces committed the crimes charged against Croats and other non-Serbs in areas of Croatia, referred to as the Autonomous Region of Kraina, the so-called SAO Kraina or SAO Kraina, which later became the Republic of Serbian Kraina or RSK for short. These crimes are alleged to have been committed from August 1991 through 1995. The said forces which were alleged to have been involved included, among others, units of the Yugoslav People's Army, called the JNA, units of the Territorial Defense, called the TO, and units of the Ministry of the Interior, called MUP, or MUP, of the South Ukraine and of the RSK as well as of the Republic of Serbia and paramilitary forces. The MOOP forces included the ordinary police of the South Ukraine and later the RSK and the so-called Militia Kraine. The prosecution has alleged that these MOOP forces were commonly referred to as Martich's police. The prosecution has alleged that the persecutions included as underlying crimes, the extermination and murder of hundreds of Croats and other non serb civilians throughout the territory of the Sao Ukraine and the RSK, including specifically in the villages of Hervarska Dubica, Severoljani, Bashin, Zaborsko, Polyanak, Lipovacha, Skabrinya, Nadin, and Brushka. These acts were also alleged to have been committed during attacks by the previously mentioned forces on these villages and, the, in, and in these areas. It was alleged that tens of thousands of Croats and other non serb civilians were deported from the South Ukraine and the RSK to areas under Croatian control or to other countries. <clears throat> Moreover, 
the persecution has a, the prosecution, I beg your pardon, has alleged that Croats and other non serb civilians were routinely detained for prolonged periods in detention facilities where acts of torture and cruel and inhumane treatment were committed. It was also alleged that public and private property in the South Kriana and the RSK was intentionally destroyed and plundered, including buildings dedicated to religion or education, and that restrictive and discriminatory measures were imposed against the Croat and other non serb civilians. Lastly, the prosecution has charged Milan Matic with responsibility for the shelling of Zagreb, which occurred on the 2nd and 3rd of May, 1995. For each count, the prosecution has charged individual criminal responsibility pursuant to Article 7.1 of the statute and pursuant to Article 7.3 of the statute. In particular, the prosecution alleges that Milan Martic participated in a joint criminal enterprise together with, among others, Slobodan Milosevic, Milan Babic, Radovan Garacic, Radko Mladic, Jovica Stanic, Stanisic, Franko Franki Simatovic, and other named and unnamed individuals of the forces mentioned previously. The prosecution has alleged that the common purpose was, quote, the forcible removal of a majority of the Croat, Muslim, and other non serb population from approximately one third of the territory of Croatia and large parts of Bosnia and Herzegovina in order to make them part of a new serb dominated state, end of quotation. In other words, the alleged common purpose was the commission of the crimes of deportation and forcible transfer. The prosecution has alleged that all of the crimes charged were within the object of the joint criminal enterprise and that all relevant times that at all relevant times, Milan Matic held the necessary state of mind for the commission of each of these crimes. In the alternative, the prosecution has alleged that the crimes enumerated in counts 1 to 9 and 12 to 19, that is, crimes other than deportation and forcible transfer, were a natural and foreseeable consequence of the execution of the common purpose. It is alleged that Milan Matic was aware that such crimes were the possible outcome of the execution of this joint criminal enterprise. The trial chamber will now tend to the accused himself. Milan Matic was born on the 18th of November 1954 in the village of Zagorovic in Knin municipality in the Republic of Croatia. He graduated from the post-secondary police school in Zagreb and worked firstly as a policeman in Šibenik and later as a junior police inspector in Knin. He was eventually promoted to chief of the Knin public security station. <coughs> From 1991 until August 1995, Milan Matic held several positions within the Sao Kraina and the RSK governments, including Minister of Defense of the Sao Kraina, Deputy Commander of the TO of the Sao Kraina, Minister of the Interior of the Sao Kraina, as well as of the RSK, and from early 1994 as President of the RSK. The trial chamber will give a brief summary of the political background of the events relevant to this case. In April and May 1990, multi-party elections were held in Croatia, in which the Croatian Democratic Union won two-thirds of the seats in the parliament. In the same elections, 
the Serbian Democratic Party gained power in several municipalities, including Benkovac, Korenica, and Knin. On the 25th of July, 1990, a Serbian assembly was established in Serb, north of Knin, as the political representation of the Serbian people in Croatia. This Serbian assembly declared sovereignty and autonomy of the Serb people in Croatia. In late August and early September 1990, a referendum of Serbs was held, which resulted in 97.7% voting in favor of Serb autonomy in Croatia. On the 21st of December 1990 in Knin, the Serbian Autonomous Region of Krajina was proclaimed by municipalities in the regions of northern Dalmatia and Lika in southern, southwestern Croatia. On the 22nd of December 1990, the Croatian constitution was amended to define Croatia as, and I quote, national state of the Croatian nation and a state of members of other nations or minorities who are citizens." Unquote. In January 1991, the Sao established a regional secretariat for internal affairs in Knin, and Bilan Matic was appointed secretary for internal affairs. The government of Croatia was informed that the Croatian MOOP would no longer be considered as having authority within the Sao On the 27th of June 1991, Milan Matic was appointed Minister of the Interior of the Sao Krajina. On the 19th of December 1991, the Sao was replaced by the Republic of Serbian Krajina. Milan Matic continued as Minister of the Interior. The evidence presented to this trial chamber has shown that the President of Serbia, Slobodan Milosevic, openly supported the preservation of Yugoslavia as a federation of which the Sao Krajina would form a part. However, the evidence has established that Slobodan Milosevic covertly intended the creation of a Serb state. This state was to be created through the establishment of paramilitary forces and the provocation of incidents in order to create a situation where the JNA could intervene. Initially, the JNA would intervene to separate the parties, but subsequently the JNA would intervene to secure the territories envisaged to be, put, to be part of a future Serb state. This evidence has been corroborated by evidence relating to the events on the ground. During the spring and summer of 1991, armed clashes took place between Sao Krajina and Croatian police in several areas. There were also raids and attacks by Sao Krajina police and other forces on several Croat majority areas, including Lovinat, uh, Ljubovo, and Glina. The evidence has shown that the JNA intervened during these clashes in order to separate the two sides. However, this changed on the 26th of August, 1991. On this date, the JNA 9th Corps participated on the side of the Sao Krajina's Militia Krajina and TO forces in an attack on the Croat majority village of Kiev, near Knin. The attack followed an ultimatum issued by Milan Martic in which he stated that, and I quote, you and your leadership 
have brought relations between the Serbian and Croatian populations to such a state that further coexistence in our Serbian territories of the South Ukraine is impossible, end of quotation. The attack on Kiev marked a turning point in the JNA's role in the conflict in Croatia. And from that point, the JNA participated in attacks on majority Croat areas and villages together with the South Ukraine MUP and TO forces. From August 1991 and into early 1992, these combined forces attacked several Croat majority villages and areas, include, including Hrvatska Kostenica, Sevrolyani, Hrvatska Dubica, Bashin, Saborsko, Polyanek, Lipovata, Skabrinja, and Nadim. The evidence shows that the attacks were carried out in order to connect Serb villages and areas across non-Serb areas. During these attacks, the crimes of murder, destruction, plunder, detention, torture, and cruel treatment were committed against the non-Serb population. The evidence is clear that the South Ukraine and the RSK leadership, including Milan Matic, endorsed Slobodan Milosevic's vision to create a Serb-dominated state. In early July 1991, <coughs> Milan Matic stated that the Militia Kraine of the South Ukraine MUP were, open quotation mark, defending Serbian land and the Serbs' ethnic area, end of quotation. On the 19th of August, 1991, Milan Matic stated that he would accept no autonomy and that the territories controlled by the police and the territorial defense of the Serbian autonomous region of Krajina will forever remain Serbian. In December 1991, Milan Matic further stated that nobody has the right to deny the Serbian people the right to live in their country. This plan to link up Serb villages and areas continued throughout 1992 with various armed clashes and attacks, including the so-called Operation Corridor, which was a military operation aimed at linking the Croatian and Bosnian Krajinas with Serbia. RSK forces under the command of, among others, Milan Matic, participated in this operation. At a meeting on the 14th of June, 1993, with Cedric Thornbury, the United Nations Protection Forces Director of Civil Affairs, Milan Matic stated that the joint life of Croats and Serbs in one state is impossible because of genocide politics of Croatia. He continued, we want to separate in two states. The trial chamber notes that around this time, in speeches in the media, Milan Matic stated that he could not guarantee the safety of the Croat population in Knin. On the 21st of January 1994, during the campaign for the RSK presidential elections, Milan Matic stated that he would, quote, speed up the process of unification, unquote and, quote, pass on the baton to our all Serbian leader, Slobodan Milosevic, unquote. It is therefore clear that Milan Matic endorsed the goal of creating a unified Serb state and that he advocated and pursued this goal at all times. 
The trial chamber considers that an objective to unite with other ethnically similar geographical areas in and of itself does not amount to a common purpose within the meaning of the law on joint criminal enterprise pursuant to Article 71 of the statute. However, the trial chamber has found that where the creation of a unified territory is intended to be implemented through the commission of crimes within the statute, this may be sufficient to amount to a common criminal purpose. The trial chamber has taken particular note of the fact that the attacks on predominantly crowded areas during the autumn of 1991 and early 1992 followed a generally, generally similar pattern. That is, the area of village in question was shelled, after which armed, armed ground units entered. After the fighting had subsided, acts of killing and violence were committed against the non serb civilian population who had not managed to flee. Houses, churches, and property were destroyed, and widespread looting was carried out as part of the forcible removal. On several occasions, the South Krana police and TO organized transport for the non serb population in order to remove it from the South Korean territory altogether to locations under Croatian control. Members of the non serb population would also be rounded up and taken away to detention facilities, including in central Knin, and eventually exchanged and transported to areas under Croatian control. Thus, the threat clearly expressed in Milan Matic's ultimatum in Kiev was carried out in the territory of the South Ukraine through the commission of widespread grave crimes. This created an atmosphere of fear in which the further presence of Croats and other known Serbs in the South Ukraine, Ukraine was made impossible. The trial chamber has therefore concluded that the displacement of the Croat and other non serb population which followed these attacks was not merely the consequence of military action, but in fact its primary objective. By way of illustration, the trial chamber will describe the takeover of the Hervarska Konstanica area and the crimes committed there. During August and September 1991, there was intensive fighting in the predominantly Croat area of Hervarska Konstanica. In mid September 1991, Sao Krajana TO and MOOP forces took control of Hrvatska Kostanica, and from there, as well as from Bosas Bosanska Kostanica in Bosnia and Herzegovina, the village of Hrvatska Dobica was shelled, and the Croatian forces withdrew. A South Krajina TO and MUP force was then set up in Hrvatska Dobica. In the same operation, the nearby villages of Sovroljani and Bashin were also taken. In September and October 1991, houses belonging to Croats were touched in Hervarska Dobica and the neighboring village of Savroljani, and widespread looting was committed by the TO, the Militia Kraine, the JNA, as well as by local Serbs. Local Croats were detained and subjected to mistreatment and were also used as life shields by the Serb forces. Serbs moved into the houses which the fleeing Croats had left. In the morning on the 20th of October 1991, a 
truck bearing the insignia Militia Sarkreiner, driven and controlled by members of the Sarkreiner TO and MOOP, collected civilians who were almost exclusively Croats under the pretext of holding a meeting in the local fire station. In total, more than 40 civilians were brought to this fire station. They were guarded by several armed Serb soldiers and they were not free to leave. Every two or three hours, there was a change of guard and the detainees' names would be read out from a list to, veri to verify that no one was missing. Over the course of the day, 11 of the detainees managed to escape or were released because they had contacts with SEPs. The following day, those detained in the fire station were taken by the soldiers to Krishan, just outside of the village of Bashan, on the banks of the Una River, and were killed. Their bodies were buried in several graves, including a mass grave at that location. The trial chamber visited this location during its side visit in September 2006. An almost identical incident occurred in nearby Savroliani in October 1991, during which the remaining Croat and other non serbs civilians were rounded up by armed Serbs under the pretext of having a meeting. They were then detained for one night in the local community center. One woman was released because she had contact with Serbs. The bodies of several persons who had been detained in this community center were subsequently exhumed from the mass grave at Kreshani near Bashi. The trial chamber has also found that the non serb civilians who remained in Bashi were also taken to Kreshani where they were killed. The trial chamber was presented with considerable evidence of acts of persecution carried out against the non serb population. Widespread acts of murder and violence, detention and intimidation became pervasive throughout the RSK territory from 1992 to 1995. These acts were committed by RS, RS, RSK TO and MOOP forces and by the JNA, as, as well as by members of the local SAP population, and created such a coercive atmosphere that the Croat and other non serb inhabitants of the RSK were left with no option but to flee or to be deported by, the force, by force by RSK forces. In this respect, the trial chamber has taken particular note of the evidence that the RSK MOOC forces directed the non serb population to collection points from which transport was organized to areas under Croatian control. By 1994, the RSK was virtually entirely Serb. The trial chamber has found that all crimes charged in the indictment, with the exception of extermination under count two, were committed in the South Ukraine and the RSK from August 1991 through 1995, including murder, imprisonment, torture, cruel treatment, destruction, including of buildings dedicated to religion, as well as plunder. However, the trial chamber stresses that there are incidents underlying the crimes charged for which the trial chamber does not find Milan Martic guilty. The trial chamber refers to the judgment in this respect. In relation to extermination, the trial chamber recalls that a minimum number of victims is not required and that the crime may be established 
by an accumulation of separate and unrelated killings. The trial chamber has, in particular, considered the evidence that the killings charged were committed within a limited period of time and within a limited territory. However, having considered these factors, as well as the totality of the evidence surrounding the killing incidents, charged as extermination, I'm sorry, the trial chamber found that the crime of extermination was not committed on an accumulated basis in this case. In the alternative, the prosecution has argued that the killings committed at Krashani near Bashan amount to extermination in and of, in and of themselves. The trial chamber considers that the killings committed at Krashani were without doubt grave, particularly considering the organized and callous manner in which the evidence shows that they were carried out. Notwithstanding, the trial chamber finds that these killings, even taken together, cannot be considered as having been committed on a large scale. In other words, the killings at Krashani near Bashi do not meet the element of massiveness required for extermination. The trial chamber will now tend to discuss the individual criminal responsibility of Milan Martic. <clears throat> the trial chamber has found that with regard to counts 3 to 14 and count 1, persecution, insofar as it relates to these counts, Milan Martic's individual criminal responsibility is one of participation in a joint criminal enterprise pursuant to Article 71 of the statute. Excuse me. The trial chamber has found that from at least August 1991, the political objective to unite SAP areas in Croatia and in Bosnia-Herzegovina with, with Serbia in order to establish a unified SAP territory was implemented through widespread and systematic armed attacks on predominantly Croat and other non sap areas and through the commission of acts of violence and intimidation. In the South Ukraine and the RSK, this campaign of violence and intimidation against the Croat and non sap population was a consequence of the position taken by the leadership that coexistence with the Croat and other non saps in Milan Matic's own words, in our Serbian territories of the South Ukraine was impossible. The implementation of the political objective to establish a unified SAP territory in these circumstances necessitated the forcible removal of the Croat and other non serb population from the South Ukraine and the RSK. The trial chamber has therefore found it established beyond reasonable doubt that the common purpose of the joint criminal enterprise was the establishment of an ethnically Serb territory through the displacement of the Croat and other non Serb population as charged in counts 10 and 11. The evidence establishes that the South Ukraine and the RSK leadership, including in particular Milan Martic, sought and received significant financial, logistical, and military support from Serbia. The support came from the MUP and the State Security Service of Serbia, from the JNA, and from the Republika Srpska in Bosnia-Herzegovina. Milan Matic stated that he, quote, personally never seized this cooperation, unquote, and that there was good cooperation with the leadership of Serbia 
notably the MOOC 